He's asking if you're ready. Hopefully not. Yeah, I think, are you ready? Um, call the meeting to order. A roll call, please. Brian Card is absent with notice. Verga Lawrence. Here. John Sarantopoulos. Here. Matthew Wendorf is absent with notice. Uh, Michael Huco. Here. And Keith Thurlow. Here. And we're adding Michael as an active member, voting member tonight. Okay. Um, special permit application number 231308, the Craft Group, Big Y Foods, landowner 70 Warrigan Road. Uh, we're going to continue that. They asked for that continuation. So that'll be the next meeting, July 17th. All right, then zone text change application 231309, Michael Shabinas, if I say that right, yep. and Je Jessica O'Brien. Allow for wedding event venues in the RD and LD zones by special permit. Uh, edits, if any, may be suggested and made to the pr proposed text up to the close of the hearing. There'll be no further advertisement of those edits. Somebody want to speak to that, Mr. Tebow? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, Norm Tebow, Killing Lee Engineering Associates. Um, I'm here uh, representing. Oh, excuse me. No, I'd like to excuse myself. Okay. Yeah, he's with the family, friends of the family, too. He wants to okay. excuse himself. So we still got a quorum just for the right? Yep. Three. three. Yep. Okay. Great. Sorry, though. No. So um, I'm here representing uh, Michael Shabinas and Jessica O'Brien this evening. Um, and uh, what you have before you is um, some proposed language uh, to be added to the. Uh, Killingly zoning regulations uh, based upon a workshop uh, that uh, uh, we had with the commission on uh, a, a previous meeting. So uh, we did we did discuss uh, this. I took in uh, some of the suggestions. Well, pretty much all of the suggestions uh, that uh, the commission put forth. And um, uh, essentially, what we're proposing to do is to uh, create some language within the regulations uh, to allow this use, because currently uh, there really isn't any language uh, in there. Uh, and the use, uh, as you know, if it's not specifically listed uh, in the regulations, then it's uh, assumed not to be uh, an allowed use. So um, uh, first of all, uh, under definitions, uh, we have uh, event slash wedding venue facilities. And uh, the, that would be a facility or facilities open to the public where weddings or events shall take place. And uh, then we are actually proposing uh, the permitted use with a special permit approval by the commission, uh, this wedding event, uh, wedding slash event facility uh, subject to Article 7. Uh, and uh, we are proposing this in two different zones. Uh, It'll be uh, in the uh, LD and the, and the MD zones. Uh, first of all, uh, item A, uh, this, well, this will be under section 410.1.2. Uh, and we're going to call this 410.1.2Q. Uh, uh, item A under that, a statement of use. A statement of use shall be submitted describing in detail the nature and scope of the event slash wedding facility and the maximum number of attendees proposed for the site. B, lot size, and uh, the language here is, um, uh, was, was modified based upon uh, the discussions that we had last month. Uh, the minimum lot size shall be a compliant lot in the zone that it is located in. Item C, access. The facility shall have access from a state, municipal, or private road. Item D, attendance, the maximum number of attendees per facility shall be based upon available parking and applicable fire code requirements. E, use separation outdoor event, wedding areas and reception buildings shall be located a minimum of 200 feet from any residential building on adjacent properties. Parking areas shall be located a minimum of 100 feet from the street line and a minimum of 150 feet from any residential building on, ad on adjacent properties. Item F, event hours, shall be limited 
to between 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays. G Health Department, the event slash wedding facility shall require approval <clears throat> from the state and or local health department as required. H Noise, uh, music for any event reception shall take place indoors. If a temporary tent is used for the indoor, sp uh, indoor space, that should be classified as a quote unquote soundproof tent. Only low level background music may be allowed outdoors during the ceremony. Noise at the property boundary shall not exceed 45 decibels at the property boundary after 10 p.m. per section 22A-69-1.1 of the Connecticut General Statutes. I lighting, lighting shall be certified dark sky compliant and shall not bleed onto adjacent properties. J traffic safety, all highway entrances to the site shall be designed to ensure safety and ease of access to the public street or highway taking into account grades and line of sight for vehicles entering and or exiting the site. All access and egress driveways from the state roads shall be approved by the De Connecticut Department of Transportation. K on-site parking shall be provided at least one space per three attendees plus one space for each staff member or employee. Permanent parking surface shall not be required. And what I added to that was off-site parking may be permitted, but parking is not permitted in the public right-of-way. And I also added, uh, after our workshop, a permanent parking surface shall not be required unless it is a handicapped accessible space, in which case shall meet the requirements of the Accessibility Act. Uh, item I, uh, excuse me, L, to minimize impact on adjacent property owners, the commission may limit the maximum number of attendees, limit event hours, limit the number of events per week or event days, and may require increased setbacks, screening, and buffers. And lastly, signage, uh, facility signs shall meet the requirements of section 540 of the zoning regulations. So that was, uh, that was for um, 410.1.2. We have the exact same language in 410.2.2. Um, so I'd uh, rather not just go through all those items again. It, it is the exact uh, same language, uh, just for a different zone. So um, okay. as I said, uh, you know, based upon uh, the workshop that we had and the input for the commission, you know, the, these, uh, uh, the language for this particular use was put together accordingly. Um, so. Um, I hope you find it favorable, and uh, obviously we're open for discussion if any other questions you have. I mean, two things jump out at me, Norm. Number one, the traffic safety uh, from State Road shall be approved by the Connecticut Department of Transportation, and it seems we should add, you know, permit by the town of Killingly. But sure. So that we, we could add that to approved by the Connecticut Department of Transportation and something like a driveway permit shall be obtained from the town of Killingly. For local roads. For local roads. Yeah. Okay. And the, the other one, um, I hate to leave it wide open on on-site parking. It's, my concern would be if you have, um, if it ends up being an event every weekend, would a grassy site be something that you'd wanna have yeah. There. Well, you know, is right. Well, I, I've done, I've done three other. Um, I've done. I, I've I've uh, had three three of these event facilities permitted in other towns. Okay. Um, and uh, two of them, the grass uh, surface has been sufficient. One of them, they were having uh, difficulties with it. So what they ended up doing is putting down a stone dust surface, which something. Which needs to be, you know, maintained once a year. Typically, they'll they'll regrade it uh, in the springtime, uh, but that's worked uh, pretty well. I mean, it seems though it isn't something we, we would really need to say. But right. on the other hand, <clears throat> if it ends up carrying mud out into the street and you oh, got absolutely, cars stuck, absolutely. I'm no well, good I think, for them uh, either. And that's the parking surface. Um, you know, in my opinion, uh, the access driveway should be a, uh, uh, you know, minimally at, at least say. Uh, something like a stone dust 
surface. Well, and I think, and I think, and I think the town's going to require that anyway. They're probably the, require the town is going to require a paved surface going, uh, you know, in and out of the facility itself. So, um, it, I, I think it just, um, it would be in the best interest of anyone coming in for um, a permit for this particular use or, or, you know, a public hearing for this use that if, if they're approved and they start having issues with if they have a grassed uh, surface and it, and it gets muddy and, and people are complaining about it, then obviously I think it's, it's in their best interest to make that modification to, uh, to make it more amenable to their patrons. I just, I just know we've been through this before mm -hmm. in some of these residential yeah. projects and it's been up in the butt where the next thing you know they've got six inch bony gravel out there and it's, it's you know it's an access road still yeah <laughs> people right they didn't do anything like they were supposed to do we spent time on it and it never happened so i mean it, it's like yeah i get it, it would, i would think it would be the logical that they would do it take care of it themselves right um right like i said i've got um, two of them that they have uh, grassed uh, surfaces and uh, in the summertime they're, they're having two or three events a week um, uh, you know you know the the client that I'm working for you know and, and I know this this regulation can't be site specific uh, but I know I, I think what happens is when you come in with with an application a formal application under these regulations um, I think it's going to behoove the the applicant to demonstrate to the commission that you know what they're proposing at the time is going to be sufficient and and if it isn't uh, then uh, it, it's certainly within your purview to um, uh, have the town monitor it or or if the if the um, applicant or, or the permittee uh, has a situation where it makes it difficult for their patrons then it's it's really up to them to address it and and certainly within their best interest if it's going to impact the business right is there anywhere where it has a uh, approval by a fire marshal or a review I think uh, under the uh, under um, uh, attendance it says maximum number of attendees per facility shall be based upon available parking and applicable fire code requirements I think because uh, the, the tent thing every time they rent tents they usually have to have fire marshal approval for it they would inspect the tent mm -hmm. yeah so I don't know if you could just um, mention that I think that's you, pretty uh, standard I mean, we could add, we could certainly add another sentence to that, um, an applicable fire code requirements, and then followed up by um, um, each facility shall be approved by the fire marshal. Something that simple, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, that's all. Just, and that's the only reason I say that, because I, I know they have to inspect the tents, so. So they're going to be there anyway. They're going to be there anyway, yeah. Right. So. Commissioners, Berger, anything else? That, any comments? No. John? No. You guys are so simple and easy tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's the workshop makes it easy. I, I think you know coming in here. Yes. And and speaking to everyone prelimin pre preliminarily. Um, no. It's a big help. Is, is is a big help? Absolutely. Come on, staff. Yeah. Um, I I would want to add on to that sentence for about the fire marshal so each facility shall be approved by the fire marshal and subject to inspection uh, annual inspection or inspection um, something along that it kind of it goes without saying but it's right. nice to have it in the, in the regulations um, one of the notes I had written on this pretty early on and I'm not sure where we would fit it in maybe even with understatement of use but a pr provision um, regarding the adaptive reuse of old halls meeting houses uh, old churches, former agricultural buildings, kind of being the preferred type of um, structure versus mm -hmm. m maybe that over new construction. Um, uh, but I'm not sure if that, how the commission felt on well, that. Uh, my reaction, you know, just off the top of my head is that we have an economic development commission. And I think that if there are structures around town that would be suitable for that, then they could play that tune mm -hmm. <laughs> so and let people know you know if that if you're considering something like that why don't you go look over there mm -hmm. you know rather than you know do construction of a whole new building when yeah. when something could be a 
Right, right. And I, and it, you know, I mean, from an ec economic standpoint too, the adaptive reuse of, of, a, of an existing structure makes a lot of sense because to build something, you know, of this magnitude, whatever it is, if it's 100 people or 200 people, whatever it happens to be, um, obviously there's, there's, there's quite a, a cost uh, associated with building from the ground up. Right, and it's also individual <coughs> buildings have individual interesting aspects. Correct. You know, and I think Correct. that if you, you I mean, promote them or, you, you, you know. may have someone who's got a carriage house on their site and they want, and they can fit 30 people in it for like, you know, baby showers or something yeah. of that nature, you know. You and, know and the ambiance. Yeah, there's an ambiance there. Yeah. You know, someone else may have a barn that they can fit 150 people in. So I think um, every, every facility in, in any building is really going to kind of dictate itself. You know, I know I've been speaking with my clients on this for probably five or six months now going through this. And, you know, originally they were saying, well, we want to have 200 people. At, this, at these things and you know and I and after discussing with it and kind of looking over the area that they'd like to go I just said it's not going to work you know you, you can't you can't expect to have that many people it, it's just you're not going to have the parking you're going to be crowded I mean one of them that I got I had approved I did uh, uh, Stonehurst at Hampton Valley in, in, in Hampton uh, we were permitted uh, for 299 people, and, and the, the reason why 299, because three, 300 requires sprinklers. So, uh, so they, requ they, are, they were permitted for 299 people. Uh, they, have, they have had one event where there was uh, over 250 and decided that never again. Uh, it just, it, it wasn't functioning correctly. Uh, it just didn't work, and most of their events are somewhere between the 150 and 200, and and that's where it works best. Uh, and uh, they find that you know people can move around better. The table, the tables uh, uh, sit better. Uh, you know people have have room to just roam around the facility, roam around the grounds. So it's 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 almost kind of a I don't want to say a hit and miss thing, but you know you can you can go into it with certain expectations, and you know hopefully you know. My experience doing this, you know, talking with my clients who are looking to do this, is going to kind of get them off on the right foot, knowing that, you know, they're not going to be able to put 200 people here. It's it's just not going to work. So, so Jonathan, what you just quoted, reuse of existing structures, mm -hmm. is that not allowing people to put up a new structure at all? Or no, I I didn't know if they're because it's special permit and there's some leeway for the commission like kind of direction for the in the future to say it's kind of preferred um you know i i think of some of the yeah. older churches or even like the grange buildings or um uh, what have you that maybe are going to look for a second life uh in the future and maybe it would make sense that they you know the grange is a meeting hall is yeah. an event center and something could be said for you know uh grandfathered in use uh but I, I maybe mean, ideally i think that would be great but on the same token you know i hate to leave it uh, if you've got the acreage and you want to yeah. do it you should be allowed to do something yep. else anyway yeah anyway that's my take um anything other anything else um no staff had a comment about the um previous workshop but that's been addressed okay. so with the updated anybody from the public want to speak to this application one way or the other no okay um nothing else one more time john no. okay uh do we want to close this public hearing make make have it so well i'll make a motion closer john makes a motion to close it second second, second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstentions, none. It's closed. Thank you, Norm. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Unfinished business, special permit application 23-1308. The craft group uh, that's continued to July 17th. Zone text change application 23-1309. Michael Shabinas and Jessica O'Brien allow for wedding event venues in the RDLD zones by special permit. Um, 
Do we have a motion at all? Is, is that are, is that application what? Yeah, we were just okay. doing with normal right. yeah, wedding venues. And okay. It's just a text change. It's a zone text change. It's not the actual. Yeah. yeah. Which, Mike, I think you were recusing yourself from? Yes. Yep. It's um, yes. up from unfinished business, so. But we don't already <laughs> have text, right? So the motion would be. This would be the text unless we're going to wait okay. until he makes revised text. This is the text that we are voting okay. on. Okay. Are you going to provide us with revised text? Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to. Uh, Put it off till then? Well, I, I, I prefer if you, if you approve it conditionally with the added text that we just discussed. I, I wrote it down. Okay. I'll make a provisional motion <laughs> to say okay to the zone text change application 23-1309. With the amendment, with the? With the amended language. Yeah. Do we have oh, a second? <coughs> second, mm -hmm. further discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. John Sarantopoulos? Yes. Vianca Lawrence? Yes. And Keith Thurlow? Yes. Motion okay. carries unanimously. All right. Um, new business. Norm. Zone text map change application 23 1310, Town of Killerly. National Flood Insurance Program. Copy. The FEMA flood maps. The modified one. Would you? So. So for done eight, we're mainly looking to schedule the public hearing. Um, these are updated flood maps um, are, and language so, uh, that we received from the state working, Amory worked directly with uh, the FEMA agent for the coordinator for the state of Connecticut um, to get our updated language. Uh, eastern part of the state, it was kind of the first one um, getting updated maps. Uh, previously, our, our current maps are from 1985 um, and don't have uh, a, a lot of uh, identified elevation points. These updated ones give us a lot of base flood elevations throughout, which is a uh, nice um, uh, thing. Uh, the town as a whole, um, when, when you're looking at the, uh, these regulations, are very important for um, mortgages and flood insurance. If a town doesn't adopt this language, it can actually be um, an item uh, that uh, can disqualify someone for mortgage or insurance programs um, in relief. So that's why uh, most towns, I think every town in Connecticut, um, uh, adopts these and why we currently have them, but it's, it's looking to do updated ones. Uh, for next month, because we're just scheduling, next month we will be getting you guys the copies of the updated maps and everything like that. We have them in our office. but. Not to scare you, there's a lot of them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just, yep. you know, go to uh, make a motion to receive and schedule a hearing for July 17th for uh, zone text and map change application 23 1310. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Yes. Uh, will we be getting a, a comparison, uh, you know, where you'll be able to show us so uh, the changes that they've the main comparison um, uh, in terms of the language is identified. That's with you guys tonight. As for the maps, um, I can look to bring our existing maps yeah. versus the new maps, yeah. uh, but I don't know if that's a, I don't know if they featured that. Um, we reviewed these first before COVID um, uh, as staff and uh, at the local COG, we went through all the maps. I know of at least one or two areas that really did change, and we can go over those kind of one by one. But for the most part, not huge changes. I, I know um, off of Valley Road, there's some houses that are very excited that they're not going to be in the floodplain anymore. Um, uh, they've been waiting for these. Um, there's some changes kind of around where our sewer plant is, uh, as well as off of Pineville Road. There's some areas that were in floodplain that aren't in floodplain anymore but the biggest change is the they've gone through and given us more data which is very useful mm -hmm. for applications okay Jim. yes mm -hmm. anybody else okay all in favor of scheduling for july 17th 
Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? None. And the same for Barbara Danielson, application number 23 1311. Uh, <coughs> received and scheduled for public hearing July 17th. I make a motion to approve that. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? All right, no. subdivision application 23-1312, Nathan Vanderswag, 134 Putnam Road, GIS map 15, lot three, approximately 16 acres, rural development zone to subdivide property into two lots for family purposes. It already had received its free split. Receiving schedule for public hearing on action for July 17th, 2023. Um, we we don't have to have a public hearing for this one if you guys don't want to, but it, it's up to you guys, whoever makes the motion. That's because it's a, uh, a family subdivision. So there, there are certain requirements and exemptions with the fam uh, a family subdivision where they don't necessarily have to give uh, to open space and whatnot, provided that it truly is for that. There's uh, uh, a time period, I believe 10 years, in terms of like sale that would uh, um, prevent your pen penalize them uh, in the future where they might have to come back even um, but being that it's a family um, right. split they're allowed to we don't have to do a public hearing so so then the town staff has a way of of remembering for 10 years <laughs> you have to be paying attention to this so, thing so there's um language that we put in, in the land record with the approvals uh in theory right and on the maps um, and we can go as far as asking for language to be put onto the deed itself for the for the property um, because the new deeds will be created with the um, subdivision and those would all be items that we'd be talking about as like uh, conditions okay. but as long as these the things don't for approval yep uh, okay. still be moving it to the 17th for approval yep so but it's a question of do we open a public hearing or do we just deal with it as old business it's up to you guys. I don't care. I'll don't make care. a motion that we just move it for approval to the 17th without the public hearing. Second. Uh, which is, uh, what is it, 23 1312. Right. So we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? None. Okay. Application 23 1313. Uh, town of Kelowna proposed easement ac access easement over a portion of real estate located <coughs> in the one Bell Park 580 Hartford Pike GIS map 114 lot 43 Village Commercial. Uh, it's just an A24, so it's just a show you either support or you don't support this easement that's in the map in your packet. Um, uh, proposed project that uh, is coming to us. This thing? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. You should have a yeah, you should have a map like this in your packet. All right. A so you say next to Jewish City Savings across from the Commons. Uh, across the Bell Park. Really. Yeah. I'm not gonna sweat it. Anyway. <laughs> so um, Go ahead. Okay. So. So the uh, thank you all. This uh, the oh, de developer talking. came with a proposal to um, put a rear access uh, road that connects to through the um, access way and parking lot area of Owen Bell Park um, for this uh, development. Um, we at staff level reviewed this. Our number one highest priority is public safety and the safety of the. Um, uh, participants at the park um, so one of the things that we looked at for um, requesting of them in the development of this is you'll notice uh, along where the park the main parking lot is for the park um, there is a little square if you will um, up along that driveway area that's to narrow the throat of that driveway to make it really just be um, space for for you know incoming and outgoing traffic um, that really helps to define it to become a four-way stop it's a it would become a full four-way stop right there right at the um, entrance at yeah. yes okay. yep um, the gate that's currently located at the bottom of town uh, at the entrance of Owen Bell Park by Town Farm Road would get relocated that 
gateway would be relocated. They would install two gates, one um, for the upper parking lot and one for the lower, lower parking lot. So those could be closed off as the, as the town deemed necessary, but not um, block that access way. Um, we really um, were um, looking at um, recognizing what we believe gonna, is going to be traffic flow. They still have to do their traffic study and all of that. The development itself has to come before you. But predominantly, this would likely be access for those that are exiting that development and trying to get to the light at Town Farm Road to take a left. There are certain times of the day that when you're exiting the, uh, even Jewett City Savings Bank, you try and take a left out of Jewett City Savings Bank during the day, and you'd be hard pressed to take that left, and it can be quite dangerous. So um, allowing for that ac access point to the rear um, and bringing them to a signaled um, intersection would uh, provide that safety. So that's not the street that's across the street from the entrance to the mall. Yes, it's right at Killing the Commons. Okay. This is the light at Killing the Commons. Okay, and so that light is already controlling what's happening on that little street, right? On Town Farm Road, yes, yeah. it is. Okay. It is. So it brings that um, that traffic largely that are going to be exiting left. So there are exits, uh, but um, you know, for the development to still go out on 101, so it's not the primary exit. One of the other uh, things that we discussed with uh, the developer in creating this access point is we recognize that there's going to be a lot of people. There are three uh, restaurant locations that are proposed in this uh, development. It would provide uh, an attraction for those that are utilizing the park to come and you know have easily accessible food or beverage um, at the park. Um, and so the um, Board of Recreation did review this in full detail, um, and they approved this uh, unanimously with the uh, condition that sidewalks are added to that um, uh, easement area um, and additional crosswalks, which um, the, the developer has agreed to do. Um, they are not reflected quite here on the map yet. They were in the process of doing that. So. Um, we uh, all, we felt the board of commit the board of rec felt that this would be um, addressing the safety concerns that they had. It would also actually narrow that intersection and create a full four-way stop intersection, um, which would actually provide higher public safety than what is currently there. Because right now there is no stop for those that are trying to exit the park, um, and there's more than one entrance, if you will, to the exit portion of the park, um, and that can be challenging. It also would funnel pedestrian traffic better um, into the park as opposed to some of the pathways that they're using right now. It would provide um, more c controlled access to that point. So the request is for an approval of the 824 um, to proceed forward um, in order for this uh, conveyance to occur. It still has to go to in front of the town council for consideration and they would be setting it to a public hearing and then ultimately it goes to a special town meeting because it does have property rights um, with regards to that. So uh, town meeting is what actually approves uh, conveyance of, an, of this easement. But I think it does balance well the, um, the um, uh, goals and initiatives of the POCD with between um, balancing development as well as um, safety and um, keeping our you know uh, parks and open space accessible. Any thoughts, anybody? Uh, I got one. I got one. Yep. Uh, Jewett City is. Agreed on their opening? So or? Jewett City has not. They only reflected that there to be able to show kind of a full, <clears throat> you know, what could potentially be the full opportunity use of it. Um, I don't know how much conversation they've had with Jewett City. Jewett City may never open that rear park. Okay. Um, but they did want to reflect it just because it is a possibility of use if that were to be, if that mm -hmm. conveyance were to be there. They did, uh, the developer has a, uh, uh, would convey this um, with the responsibility of full maintenance of that uh, um, easement from Town Farm Road all the way up through to their development um, in perpetuity. So they would have to be responsible for all paving 
repairs as well as uh, plowing and maintenance throughout the throughout the winter. Okay, so that looks like there's an entra entrances in the front. As well. Yes, there is. And and the back is either in or out. Correct, correct. And really, that's really to address um, the so the front portion. You'll notice on that development does have a right hand turn only further down you know uh on the western yeah, yeah, yeah. side yeah but on the western end yes yeah. and that's really to address because the sight line is very challenging right at that point um because 101 starts to curve yeah. and so the the access point gets challenging so that would be a, a right hand turn only so typically if somebody is coming through here especially with the drive-through component um they're going to want to drive in and drive out right so they're going to come in and largely they're going to take a right heading out on 101 that would be you know we as uh people that are driving we typically take the path of least resistance um and so and the quickest way out so that's largely where the largest volume of your traffic is going to go it's going to come in and it's going to go out um that um right hand turn um this is really to address or um, provide alternative exiting options for those that are maybe taking a left-hand turn and um, want to get to that traffic light to take the left-hand turn as opposed to trying to take a left-hand turn uh, out of the other out of the other uh, two-way entrance. You mean this yes. thing? Yes. Yeah. But it makes for safety's sake. If it were me, yep. and especially if I had a kid in the car, I would just go back out that way. Yes. And go because here's. There's yep. a light here, right? Yeah, and that's why they really wanted to get to that signal. That's why the request for the conveyance of the easement originally came. Um, and, you know, we really scrutinized it very uh, thoroughly at the staff level on all, you know, at all departments. So emergency management, um, planning and zoning, town staff, engineering staff. Um, we spent a lot of time reviewing that, looking at it from uh, at the recreations level, all the town events that we have, what are the... What are the potential stumbling blocks? Um, and we really feel that what's being presented here tonight really addresses those uh, public safety concerns that we had. Emergency vehicle access still has full access to the park. So um, while that's being narrowed at the top, it would obviously still have to be able to accommodate fire trucks, school buses, all of those still have to be able to get in and out of that uh, location safely. Um, and by creating that into a four-way stop right there at that intersection, it actually creates an intersection um, right there kind of within that parking lot space and would provide uh, greater um, public safety by kind of getting the vehicles to stop um, and pedestrians having an opportunity to cross. Um, so uh, we really did spend a lot of time reviewing this um, and really talking through what the potential impacts would be. Any further discussion? We're good, John? Mm -hmm. I'm okay. So we have a motion on this? Well, it's a motion to support or, do not, or do not support. We, we take citizens' comment, right, on these? Um, no, you were no. past well, citizens' a, comment. This okay. is not yeah. That. This is the, no, okay. Yep. The the citizens this is, that's at the council level. Well, the count. Yeah. No, the council will get it through a public hearing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Well, if we deny, it. all it does is it makes it they have to forces the com council to have a two-thirds vote. Correct. They actually vote to purchase land. Right. So our influence is two-thirds vote or not. Right. Yep. So if you support it. Right, but I will say, yeah. I think that the council would, you know, listen to that as well, just like I brought it to the uh, Board of Recreation because the Board of Recreation oversees Owen Bell and getting their input on whether or not they felt that this was going to be detrimental to the overall park was important. Um, and so bringing in, and they did support it unanimously after they reviewed uh, the full context of it. Yeah. So would, I have yeah. one more question. Sure. So from a driving point of view, I think that exiting this way is the safest for traffic mm -hmm. and the people in the car. However, that means that there's like what kids all around. <laughs> well, you know? not necessarily. I mean, there, we don't necessarily have kids running around in the in the, in the parking lot. We do have. Well, I'm talking about. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah, that's a parking lot. So it's all know. a parking lot right yeah. through there. So yes, yeah. there are there are children that cross from one that cross from that currently go from Killingly Commons. Yeah. They cross 101. And they go up through, 
you see it all the time. They cross 101 with their scooters or their bikes or their skateboards, and they cross 101 and they go up into um, killing and they go up into Owen Bell that way. And they typically do hit the lower parking lot, and they kind of go right across that lower that lower parking lot um, and all the way up through. And they kind of take a diagonal path to the skate park is really kind of how you watch them walk right now. Um, introducing this uh, design by adding the additional buffers that come out and creating a more formalized intersection right there. Kids are more apt to actually see it as an intersection. There's going to be stop signs um, and so and it'll actually stop the cars right there at that intersection so they'll be able to see these kids that are coming from across uh, 101 but there's groups that pat they cross 101 it's a lit it's a lighted crosswalk yeah. they they cross 101 right now all the time currently cars only stop coming in off town farm road but if you're exiting owen bell park it, there's, there's not, no stop there's no stop sign right now so if you're just speeding mm -hmm. through the parking lot oh, right oh, now okay so is that a, that's a problem right? that's a problem <laughs> that's a problem yeah. this would actually correct that problem because it would put a stop sign there okay. and it would make the person stop okay um so that that would address some of that internal flow okay. that is a challenge for those pedestrians all right so is yes. it an intent that they have a, a defense that right away or not no not fence it because we I really believe that we're probably gonna see people coming from the park walking there so the request was put a sidewalk um, along that easement along that um, drive so that way people that are coming from the park are actually walking on a sidewalk and then have uh, you know crosswalks on the rear portion that aren't currently shown on the map that's been the request they've been receptive to that and they were gonna be updating their information for that um, so the Board of Recreation did approve this unanimously on the condition that those sidewalks were added to the plan. Right. Okay, anybody else? A motion then? Make I'll a make motion. a motion to approve, uh, to move forward. Support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstention? Thank you very much. Okay. Special permit application 23-1314, CBD, CPD, Killingly LLC, Dominic Carpionato, and others. <laughs> 536, 542, 552, Harford Pike, <coughs> 0.95 acres. Put your finger on which. Right down. Oh, OK. Um, 0.95 acres, 0.34 acres, and 0.64 acres for construction of a 12,580 square foot commercial building with drive through and associated site improvements receiving schedule for public hearing July 17th. That is the property we're talking about. Yep, that's it? the mm -hmm. same property we're talking so about. So this is the same yep. project. Yep. Yep. Just scheduling it. And you'll get much more flushed out plans. Yes. 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 Okay. So we're going to move that to a special area. Yeah, bro, that's uh, yeah, on a seven day, yeah, special permit. So, yeah, so uh, we need a motion to schedule it. It is, it is received, it's already. Oh, yeah, we got a big box yeah. of stuff for you guys. Okay, somebody want to make a motion to schedule this for a public hearing? I'll do that. Do we have a second, second, second by Mike. Any further discussion? Hmm? I'll wait for the packet. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? And for clarification, that's the July 17th, right? right. Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay, Town of Killingly zone text change to add more definitions for uses, et cetera, to the Town of Killingly zoning regulations, Article 3 definitions. Section 310, receive and schedule for hearing also July 17th. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to make that a busy night. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be at the end of the agenda, that particular item, just because of the... But there's several items. Yeah, there's several <laughs> items, and we're still going. <laughs> um, so what are what are we adding to definitions? Just a short snippet of what this is. This so is what we're, we're on tonight. Oh, okay. We're, yep, that was what we talked about in the workshop. Okay. It will be updated, so that way it shows uh, everything I, that's staying, everything that's new and being changed. Yeah. Um, and I will make sure that that language is to you guys with ample time. Uh, I believe it's 10 days before the hearing is when we want to have, if there's any changes, we try to get all the changes before then, and then they get posted with the town clerk again and out to you guys. So, Motion? I'll make a motion to 
move at the public hearing July 17th. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions none? Approved. <coughs> okay, special permit application 23-13-16, Snake Metal Club. Well, that doesn't keep the same special permit number from the original? You know, I had <laughs> I had that same question, um, uh, and uh, we did it for filing purposes. It's all together all right, with I'm the original. Sure you, you we know. did it for filing purposes, so that way there would just be an updated notice with the revised. Uh, but it heavily Probably references is. the original. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree. That's what I tend to do with wetlands. If there's an extension, I keep the same application number. So, Snake um, Metal Club, uh, Incorporated mm -hmm. by 67 Hubbard Hill Road, Hubbard Road. GIS map 255 lot 10 RD requests first renewal of special permit for excavation of 373,000 cubic yards of sand and gravel mm -hmm. from 19 acres of land. Um, it's basically just to renew the, yeah. the gravel up permit. Yep. So, so it's all yep, report me. on the conditions. Yeah, it's everything good. is uh, looking good. It's moving forward. Um, uh, kind of unique one that has two different kind of competing gravel companies pulling stuff out of there. It's unique to see that. Um, but the uh, phase one and phase two are um, being, or one is fully restored, the other one, grass is uh, taking hold right now. So they're on the third phase? Um, the way that they're doing it, um, phase three isn't really activated. They're uh, more on uh, like phase four because um, they uh, found better material. There was, uh, overall, there's uh, just shy of three acres open, and that's what um, is what you want to do, is stay no more than three um, and start restoring. So um, we had the meeting with um, uh, the State Meadow Club president uh, there this morning, uh, me and Dave Capaccione. Uh, gave him a little bit of direction in terms of restoration in, in one area, like the next areas mm -hmm. to move forward before they then go on to the next. Uh, Dave felt that the existing uh, bond, which is $15,000 cash, um, stays in place um, and uh, recommended for the um, uh, uh, extension. So, yeah, what was the approved fourth phase? So, was it just three? There's eight phases total. So, they are oh, approved yeah. Yeah. as a whole, but they're not supposed to have. So, there, there's uh, thresholds. At three acres and under is what we should be at, like in terms of open yeah. at a time. And then you're supposed to restore before you open the next. If you hit five acres, you need a separate permit from the state of Connecticut. Um, so I just don't remember eight phases so, mm -hmm. when they approved it. Yeah, and we that was one of the things in the last uh, the last approval. We had them renumber them because uh, originally it was like phase one, phase one A, phase one B, and they were you know had started on phase like six. You know, so they all got renumbered. One and two have been restored. Um, one of the phases they didn't hit good material. Um, so that's the next one they're in the process of regrading and restoring, but it's just a bunch of clay. But so they're not expanding it beyond where they originally were approved. Yeah, it's, it's all the same meets and bounds of the original approval. I do have plans if you guys want to look at it, but it's uh, no different than uh, what was previously approved, uh, and they are following all the conditions of that approval. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so this is... Uh, like 300,000 plus sand and gravel from 19 acres of land, and that's mm -hmm. just what they're going to do in the next um, section. We don't have an updated cubic yard. That's the original amount that they were approved. Okay, so I, I'm baffled as to how to make a motion on this then. This being new. It, okay. It, yeah, All it's right. a three, and it's kind of new because this is one of the updated um, things we did with earth rags where the gravel permits, they have to come back every three years. Um, but it's uh, it's just for an approval. Similar to wetlands, if any of you have done wetlands before, <coughs> after five years, you have to ask, ask for an extension up to another Okay, 10. so the general question is, so since they have to come back every three years, mm -hmm. does that mean that we get a, a report from staff that they're doing the right thing yep. or they're doing something wrong and whack them. Yep. So one of the conversations that we had with them was uh, quarterly reporting, um, and that's um, all the gravel um, permits that are out there have been uh, struggling with um, during COVID and when things were a little slower, you know, kind of get a pass on that. But that was a conversation with them that we want to see that quarterly report again. 
uh, with them. And it's somewhat informal, it's just an email. Um, and that would be correspondence that we could work into the meetings just to let you know where they stand and how they're going. Um, but the, uh, there's all, we wouldn't be recommending for a, a um, renewal um, of the permit unless staff had gone out and verified. Okay, so you want a motion to approve at this point? The recommendation from staff to is, to yeah. is to renew. Okay, mm -hmm. so I make a motion to that effect. Do you have a second? Second. second. Michael. Uh, any further discussion? I think next time if we had something, you know, even a eight by 11 or something. Uh, like the, the original approved site yeah, plan? Just okay. So right, just so we see. We can see what they're. Yeah. Yeah. I do have the folder phases. if you guys want it, but. Um, I'm not taking your word for it that it's okay. eight phases. It's, it's, it's part yep. of the original. I don't remember eight phases, so. Yeah. Yeah, that was in the. <laughs> I don't recall Sounds ever doing that big a number. There's no. each phase is only like, uh, like two acres or less. It's it's really small. Well, the whole 19 acres wasn't really that big. It no, big. it's very narrow for yeah. a gravel pit. They're kind of wedged between them and some water and residential on the other side. So they they okay. have a very unique little area. So we're going on to the next thing. No, not to mm -hmm. vote. No, we have a uh -huh. motion uh, and a motion and, and a second. seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed or abstentions, none. Okay. Yeah, next time just try to give us more. Yep. Um, <coughs> adoption of minutes. Workshop meeting minutes, May 15th, 2023. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions. Regular meeting minutes, May 15th, 2023. Motion. Well, I have to confess, I haven't had time to read either one of them for mistakes. Well, we haven't. Yeah. We can just table it till next time if you want. I know, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it that much. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so I make a motion to adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of May 15th, 2023. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? No. Okay, well, workshop for the business park. Do we need a workshop for that, for the regulations portion? Uh, the regulation, yeah, we would want to schedule one for next month for the regulations, um, but I, I no real further discussion on it tonight. Do you need a motion for that? If we could. You can have a, I'll make a motion. You've got a too. lot going on that night. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's up to it's you guys. It's July. I know. I know. Wetlands originally was scheduled for July 3rd. Well, they had they, the whole They told me, no up, way. We they? canceled that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. My kid's getting married June 30th, so whatever happens after that, I don't care anymore. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I just don't know if we do. So do we have a motion? No, no. not yet. I'm okay. still thinking we okay. really need a motion. Uh, well, it, if you think it's too busy of a night, um, we can try to get something together for you guys. And we can always submit it. We can have it as an item um, to submit to you in the meeting as a potential to discuss. You're going to workshop in the course of the meeting. Why don't we do that? You give it to us as a handout, and we'll schedule it for August. We can, if or you, we can schedule it at the next meeting for August. Yep, or a potential to discuss at that night if for some reason if it opens If there's an up. opening. Yep. It doesn't look like there's going to be one. <laughs> Everybody content with that? Yes. Yes. Correspondence. Anybody got questions about the correspondence? Reports from zoning um, officers. Go I ahead. do have something with the correspondence. So, the, um, and so we do have correspondence from uh, Kathy A. Hest. Uh, I think she's here tonight. Right? Yeah, she's here tonight. Um, so uh, it's in regards to you know as we had discussed earlier. Sometimes there's a little gray areas in the regulation. So the Alzon regulations um, don't say that um, subdivision is not possible, right? Um, and what they are looking to do is a subdivision application for two weeks lane. Uh, but prior to submitting that, the, um, she submitted some correspondence as well as a, like a kind of a draft map. Uh, for you guys to look at. Um, uh, staff has reviewed it. Um, I believe it would just be. Can you pass that around for people? Yeah. yeah. It should be in your packet. It is? Yep. Well, okay. We just got the packet, so. 
Is it in here somewhere? I don't know. There you go. You got it. Okay. Better than me. So this is an Alexander's Lake. Yep, uh, two weeks lane. Uh, so uh, southern part. Um, it's not part of the. So what, what am I looking at? The the two lots. That you got three thirty one. Which one wants to be split? Oh, I see. So two weeks lane, it would be like a lot line adjustment and uh, a split <coughs> off of two weeks lane. Um, we we believe that it would be a subdivision. Um, going to ask what's what the what the Alzod regs say because I don't think we've ever had this so Alzod regs don't mention subdivision so like an overlay tends to put restrictions or, or opens up stuff for the um, for that for that zone um, there's no language in the overlay that says no subdivision um, they do have language about um, uh, uh, merging of lots uh, they talk about uses changing the cottages over from seasonal to year-round there's all that um, sorts of language involved with that, but some of the, like a good for instance would be underlying. You still have, if you're in a low density or rural development zone, whatever the underlying is, you in theory could still do agricultural uses, have backyard chickens for instance, uh, but it might not work for where you are near the lake, you know, for water quality um, or where that's come up before, who's the property owner, who's the landholder. So a lot, a lot of the property you have, um, uh, the uh, the Sheridan's property and everything like that up there um, those properties um, if they say no that's that's their own rules it's like a, almost like a homeowners association condominium <coughs> uh, association that's pretty much how these are leased out um, but there is owned um, lots uh, particularly on the southern end uh, in this area so um, many of them have private ownership uh, and provided they can meet the standards by which Alzod requires, so that 7,000 square feet, um, uh, and try to make the structures uh, more conforming than what they are. Most of them on two weeks lane, the, the individual cottage are, are uh, legal non-conforming, um, but uh, we would want to see the proposed professional plan, you know, when it's all done. But uh, this is just a draft um, that they put together to. to uh, just to see if you guys had any questions. So it's 3,000 square foot is what's required by Alzada? I thought you just said 6,000. Uh, it's, it's whatever is on that. I don't have my paper in front of me. All right, so, so it's 3,000 here. Yep, so it's 3,000, yep. <coughs> so splitting this bigger lot, I mean, without doing the math here, that, that is given each lot 3,000? So um, it is splitting off number two from 30.1. Um, and the remaining, there's other six or seven, I think, um, uh, individual cottages that are still on 30.1. It's not splitting them all up. It's just splitting off uh, the one, the property so what owner. You're saying, okay, yep. <coughs> if I'm reading this right, what you're saying is 30.1, mm -hmm. outside of the red box, yep. is one structure in a garage. Is that what I'm seeing? the on top so there's uh a cottage outside, outside of the red box outside the red box no there are more structures there's there's uh like seven or eight cottages so is this land part and of 30. sheds one a portion of it would be 30.1 and then what it'd be a lot <coughs> line in a split so all of this belongs so there's 30.1 the top part you can see that where it identifies yeah. 80 83.3 and up is 30.1 and below that is part of 30. It's all the same property owner right so now. So, you can do a lot so 30 and 31 is owned by the same? Same entities. Yep. Okay. So what you're saying is you're taking a portion of land from each one of those lots. Yep. And creating a new lot. And creating this whole new lot. Yep. At 80 feet in front of it. It would have to have um, all the minimum requirements <coughs> of, of I'm just reading what's here. 80 feet, 79.25 feet. Uh, the minimum. Hold on. No, I'm just reading what this is saying. Yep. Yeah. Trying to, 70 miles. Trying to be clear of what we're. Oh doing. no. Um. So th those footages are just existing footages uh, from the GIS map right, that are called out. So. I'm trying to be clear. Here. But I want to give you guys the correct answer in terms of uh, the required. I don't memorize them all. <laughs> Let's see. So Alzad in terms of 
It doesn't have a minimum for frontage. Um, it's more of the overall area. So, uh, well, there's a lot of lots where you, you can't change what the frontage is. It's and, and most of them are on private roads. Yeah. Um, like this, this is a private yeah. um, uh, roadway. So, um, the, but, so the, yep. the two structures right here yep. inside the box yep. currently belong to this property. Yes. So that that's a cabin and this is a cabin. Mm -hmm. Cabin, I'm sure. Yep. On this one whole lot. And yes. You're trying to split it up into put yeah. It on so the, so the one cabin in could in theory be sold off to another entity um, uh, with the land um, instead of uh, just being the cottage and not having ownership of the so land. You have a better grip on the uh, except the regs say you can do it. Then I didn't see anything that said they couldn't, um, but I know this um, could be. I don't know of other areas that maybe could have similar. Um, you know, uh, thoughts to it. I don't know if it would work anywhere else on the lake, uh, but it's it's something I, I don't think I've seen an application for in, in the past, so. I know we've never done it. Yeah. The most we've ever done over there is putting garages, allowing people to put garages yeah. across the street from each other. So I, I can say on the staff end, we would look at it, and if need be, we would reach out to legal if we get an application, just to make sure that we're interpreting correctly, because it's an overlay um, district, um, but doing the subdivision. I don't see any issue of creating uh, a new lot based off at least the overlays zoning. Well, maybe that's the best idea at this point. Have somebody tell us it is legal to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, and if the commission wants us to reach out, we can reach out to the attorney with this exact one. Um, the people are here too. I don't know if you had any questions for them or if you guys had anything to add. Someone said it was two cottages. It's a cottage and a garage. Yeah, right. Yep. Right. No, I think at this point, I think we understand what's going on, but I just don't know where we stand in all this. So I would, okay. I would like to see before we move on in it. So yeah, we don't have an application yet, but I can reach out um, to legal an counsel opinion. and just get, get an opinion on it. Yep. Legal department. That's not a problem. And then once we and get that we'll um, opinion back, I'll share that with you guys as well. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anything else from the bench? Anything else on this section, correspondence, Jonathan? Um. No. If anybody got any questions? No. I mean, uh, Amory included an article um, from right. from the bench uh, mm -hmm. and highlighted an area that. Uh, or a portion of the section based off a recent court case. I just encourage you guys all to read through. Zoning officers and zoning board appeals report. Uh, Island wetlands reports. Uh, I have no written reports for you. I'm here, uh, but the uh, ZBA um, did not meet. We didn't have a quorum, but the we the only real thing we were doing was uh, organizational. Um, uh, inland wetlands. Uh, we did meet. Uh, we had a few agent approvals for new houses and a couple mainly residential uh, projects uh, being moved forward for site walks. Okay, economic development. Good evening. I apologize for my tardiness. I was coming back from Boston. Traffic was a little heavy. Um, on June 6, the EDC hosted the Northeast Commercial Real Estate Group, um, which met with the developer Parker Benjamin at 140 Main, and they did a downtown tour was really valuable for the commercial agents to get an idea as to what we had going on downtown. Um, we had a ribbon cutting um, on the 9th for Wicked Sinister Smokehouse, which is right behind um, Danielson Surplus. Um, early <coughs> indication is that he's doing well, and um, ultimately he'd like down the road to put a permanent fixture there. Um, the um, We were awarded um, a National Endowment of the Arts grant um, called Our Town, and it's called Savadi, and it's a, a placemaking grant of capturing the his history of how the Laotians ended up here in Killingly, um, and it's a great story that'll include a living documentary, a film, a couple murals, and um, a large musical instrument that'll be interactive, that'll be in the art park with the brown... I, mean, I just have to ask a snarky question because <coughs> I was on this commission when all that, and 
people were pretty hostile towards the newcomers. And I can remember there being warfare here as a consequence. And I just wonder, that's not happening anymore, right? No, it's actually a lovely story that we should be proud of. I mean, it was change. Um, and, and I discovered you know, by accident how it all happened through the O'Leary's um, sponsoring one family that ended up mm -hmm. with over 500 families. And now we're opening businesses for that second generation. Um, and they've made Killingly their home. So it's a, a celebratory <coughs> story to be told, um, and they will be included in the art design and the documentary and the film, and it'll be, um, the documentary itself will be hosted at the um, Historical Society because, you know, for future generations. Um. Wow, <coughs> wonderful. Because <coughs> yeah. it really wasn't nice back then. <laughs> Times, um. times are changing. Um, and then uh, Killingly was awarded an EPA multi-use grant um, that will be used for several brownfield parcels um, with a focus on the Old Borough Wastewater Treatment um, Parcel and the Blueville Mill. Um, and part of that, there's a secondary grant. Um, we've been selected to participate in an um, online portal called Citizens Lab that will um, engage the residents of those neighborhoods around those mill sites. Citizens what? Citizens Lab. Lab, L-A-B. Correct, I'll be working with the Yukon TAB program um, with that portal. And it'll be interactive, um, historical, um, questions, concerns, and then when those sites get remediated, they'll have design and input um, as to what they'd like their neighborhoods to look like. What, what are they uh, going to try to do with the Blueville Mill? Um, right now, it, we're just finishing up the phase two um, on a prior EPA grant um, to see what the cost assessment would be. Um, so this secondary, this other grant, the new one, will go towards the remediation of it, what needs to be done, what's left there. Just getting rid of the, the contaminants. Lead, if, yeah, if there's lead paint, um, the water testing, all of that's happening now. Um, so we should have the results for that. Oil tanks. Hmm. One has been removed. <laughs> There's some gaps in the information. What I mean, just recently? No, back in the uh, 90s. No. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. There's some gaps in the information, hence the this phase one, one phase there. two work. Okay. Um, that is it. Town Council liaison, please. It's me. Um. For June's meeting, um, June is um, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Month and National Pollinator Month. There was a presentation by Any Edge LLC. They will be eventually coming to um, the planning and zoning. Um, it's a proposed data center on the last parcel of land on Alexander Parkway. So um, the first step was a host fee agreement in lieu of taxes that. Um, that the town council approved. It's one of many steps. Um, Wait a second. What what do we get in lieu of taxes from them? Host host fee agreement. What does that mean? So um, it's an agreement between the town and the company to pay um, money to the town each year. It's called the host fee agreement. I don't have the okay, exact I, figures I in no, Mary. Like, like I, we I, did with the generator. Yeah. Okay. 30 years. Yeah. Okay. It's what they call it in the state statute. The state statute <coughs> calls it a uh, host fee agreement. Okay. Thank you. So that 39 okay. acres they're talking about, is that the piece where they had the contamination we were looking at? You were cleaning it up? Yeah, and it also like um, the Ross pieces in its entirety is 39 acres, and um, additional purchase of uh, two parcels owned by a business owner. So eventually, it. that was the host fee agreement. That was just the first step. Um, Teresa Barton uh, was reappointed to the historic district, and um, Renee Mazzarella to KB Ambulance. And um, in the town manager's report, um, Jill already addressed the EPA uh, multi-purpose grant. Um, the D um, WPCA superintendent position is still open. 
Um, Mary's interviewing for um, executive assistant, um, who um, just left a few weeks ago for a new position. The assistant revenue um, collector's position has been filled. Um, an update on the Eddie Prey Reservoir Dam. The breach was um, blocked by beavers. <laughs> yeah, it is currently right now. <laughs> so um, as the water levels are rising, um, the, the, it's still not safe to open up the road. Um, we have a double A plus credit rating with um, standards of poor. Thank you, Mary. Um, KMS update, um, the uh, phase two work is moving forward. Um, ex um, completion is expected in the fall of 2024. Westfield Avenue is moving forward with um, bids for the roof windows and the brickwork. And um, is that where the old high school was? And the old, old high school. Uh, the old, old high school. Um, the old high school, not the, the old high school. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and um, there's been a year um, hold on um, eliminating the motor vehicle taxes from the munici municipal tax base. Oh, um, um, all of the um, foreclosure um, uh, foreclosures uh, properties and the taxes that haven't been able to be collected, uh, those are going to be moved forward. And they will be they are not that the taxes won't be collected if they find the um, or are able to find the people that owe the taxes. Those will be collected, but it's just to get them off the books, such as motor vehicle taxes somebody hasn't paid them and they try to re register a motor vehicle in the state, they'll, it'll come back to them that they owe taxes in the county accordingly. The early voting was approved, so there's um, 10500 in reimbursement for the state, but that still is up to, um, to see how much the actual cost will be, so there may, may be an additional um, reimbursement for that. It's since it's the first time the, the voting early voting is going to happen. And I think that's it. Okay, good. Motion to adjourn. You got one. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.